If you missed the last video where my friend Greg and I demoed his existing porch and deck and then rebuilt the deck, then that is linked for you down below. That will catch you up to the point that we're at now, which is rebuilding the porch itself. When we were demoing the old porch, the only part we held on to to reuse were these giant white oak posts. Actually, Greg is also a sawyer and milled these posts himself. Man, I'm so strong. We detached them from the rubble, then set them in place one by one, making sure to place them on top of the beams of the deck so that they were on solid footing. Then we would set two braces in place to get them nice and plumb. To start, we would first make sure the post was sitting square to the face of the deck. Then using a post level, which just reads level on two faces at once, to move the post into plumb. While one person was reading the levels, the other person would be squeezing down on the clamps to hold it into that position. After checking it one last time that nothing had moved, we threw a few screws in the braces. If you don't have a post level, then using a four foot or six foot level on two sides also works. After we got the second post set, we next moved to the top and set the header to hold them into position. We could have gone through and first set all of the posts, then gone back to the headers, but instead we built the porch by working left to right and going through the stages before we moved all the ladders and scaffolding over. Once the header was in place, then we started throwing up the rafters. Well, not right away. We first needed to figure out the angle and depth of the back cut to allow the rafter to sit on the header attached to the shop. Then also the front's bird's mouth to allow it to sit on the header spanning the post. We started off by positioning one rafter in place to get both of these figured out and marked. Then we cut it and test fitted it to make sure it worked. Once it was good to go, we marked this one as our template and used it to duplicate the cuts on all the other needed rafters, which was a lot. Greg and I ended up finding a really good system for cutting these out quickly though. He would grab a new board from the raw material stack and set it on the tailgate, which is a wonderful job site workbench by the way. He would place the template on top of the new board and get things lined up. Then he would use the circular saw to cut the end of length, then also make the majority of the cuts for the bird's mouth. While he was doing that, I would make the finished cuts with the jigsaw to end up with a clean 90 degree corner. It's really easy to use a circular saw and just overcut the corner so that you don't have to use two tools here. But that does mess with the weakness of the connection. So since this is something that will be around for a long time, just take the extra time to make it nice and clean. After switching sides and both our tools finishing their needed jobs, I would take the completed rafter and set it in place over at the porch while Greg grabbed the next board so that we could repeat the entire process. I always feel like processing material is a big slowdown in the project, but the great thing about getting things staged like this is it makes the next step fly. With the rafters all ready to go and lined up, Greg and I could position our ladders and very quickly start installing them. Our system here was Greg passing over the tail of the rafter to me while he walked up his ladder. I would position it on the header and secure it in place. I don't know if you can tell, but I have a spacer here to avoid having to pull a tape and set each one. I would use a spacer to determine the location, then once I pinned it, I would move it out of the way, finish securing the rafter, and then use my spacer for setting the next one. Now, Greg didn't have a spacer at his end. Well, I mean, he kinda did. See, the front of the porch gets blocking in between each rafter. This is a board cut to length to fit between the rafters, but it gets secured in place. This not only gives rigidity to the rafters to prevent them from rolling, but also closes off the gap that's created between the top of the header and the top of the rafter, just to keep birds and such out. One addition that made this step easier was Justin, who's the videographer. He ended up passing the rafter up to Greg, which saved him a trip up and down the ladder. With a third hand, we could actually attach two rafters before we had to shift the entire operation down some. Once we installed all the rafters we could on two posts we had installed, we would both hop down and then install the next post, and then the next header, and then repeat with the next section of rafters. We completed the rest of the porch by working in base sections like this. And this is probably my favorite part of the project. I absolutely love stages that you can see such drastic change in progression. To give you an idea on timeline, the deck took us two days to complete. Then, so far, all of this progression was a day's work. So things really do move along quickly once you get into a flow. Then before calling the step complete, we went to the two ends of the porch and attached an additional rafter to cap it off. 
These are in line with the house and will act as the fascia. It's not too shabby, huh? I'm tuckered. Greg, are you tuckered? I'm tuckered. But we're not done yet. Now we capped off the front of the rafters with another 2x6. This is also called the fascia. We would first pull the tape and figure out what the board needs to be cut to to land on the center of a rafter. Then face nail it directly into the ends of the board. And just a tip, use a speed square or another straight edge reference to align this board. This will keep your roof in one line and avoid a bump that would be creative if you flushed up the rafter by hand. Next day we started off by tying all of the rafters together with purlins. These are one by boards that are spaced apart every two feet and these not only tie the rafters together, like I said, but also gives boards in the center of the roof to screw into in the next step when we start attaching roof panels. This is such an easy step. It literally is just placing the one bys in place, making sure it falls on the center of a rafter and then nailing it down. But it takes forever because it is a ton of crab crawling around, which is surprisingly really tiring. I would work from one side of the roof to the other and then from the front of the porch uphill to the back. When I got to the sides, I would let the purlins just run wild. And then after they were all installed, I'd use a circular saw to trim them all flush. Next, bring in the roofing panels. Greg went with standard metal roofing panels and since he has a tractor, he first placed them on the forks to lift them up in the air for me to just grab and place into position. After laying down a sheet, he would inch the tractor forward so that it would be in line with the next needed position so that I could pull it directly off and then on. Since this was really just a one person job, I handled the high work while Greg tackled building a set of stairs for the lower deck. After getting a sheet laid down with one corrugation overlapping the previous panel, I would secure it with screws, going into each one of those purlins I said in the previous step. When you buy your roofing material, it should come with screws in the same color, and these will probably have a rubber washer under the screw head, so that when you seat the screw in the metal, it will seal around the hole you're creating and won't leak. And I'll tell you this, it is a remarkable feeling to sit underneath shade you create with your own hands. I think it tickles something primal in our DNA that stems back to the instinct to create shelter. Or I'm just odd. <laughs> Either way, it was outstanding to sit underneath our cell-created shade that day and eat lunch. After taking a break, we got back to work though. As you build a structure like this, it is fascinating to build the progression as well as see it. It starts off flimsy and then every step adds more and more rigidity to where at this stage, trying to move, shake the structure feels 100 times better. Even though it felt strong, Greg's old porch had these beautiful braces spanning between the post and the headers. So we quickly went to his shop and made a few more. If you would like to stay up to date with what I'm building in real time, be sure to follow me over on Instagram or Facebook. That was all we were able to get done in the few days I was visiting. But since leaving Greg's, he's put a lot of finishing details such as painting, adding soffit, lights, and even some plants. We were both in awe of what we were able to accomplish in just four days. We celebrated wrapping up this big project by moving a table onto the porch and having a family dinner on it. And that was really the cherry on top of a great rewarding week. That was not bad for three and a half days worth of work. So if you have a porch on your list, then I really hope that this has helped you out. It might not go in three days, but don't let that be the factor for if you tackle it or not. Greg has built this entire shop by himself. So it can be done regardless of what project is on your list. Uh, be sure to check out Greg on Instagram as well as his website. He offers tons of classes, a course on chair making in this wonderful heaven of a shop of his. So I'll leave you links to all of his stuff down in the description and of course to everything we use down in the description. Hope that you've enjoyed watching this and I'll catch you on my next one. Cheers. 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 Yeah. I guess. All right. <laughs>
thank you so much for checking out this video. If you would like another project to tackle, don't forget that I have templates for this folding Adirondack chair. Of course, it's an Adirondack chair, but then you can tuck it away into this nice sleek profile for either storing it during winter or just simply after a party. You can click right here to get your templates.